Hi all. Um, there were some revealing comments actually in the last Blitz game and before doing a post-mortem, just from a positional point of view about colour square complexes, I thought it was interesting to consider um, that actually uh, one of the commentators was quite right that I was weakening my light squares quite a bit and without the light square bishop in the Sicilian you know, maybe you can be in trouble in, in different variations in the Sicilian. Um, so I, I want to ask you a sort of diagnostic question about two pawn moves in different openings. So let's see, e4, and you play c5, you play the Sicilian defence, and you put a pawn on the dark square, knight f3, and now you put another pawn on the dark square. So the question I seriously want to ask you, everyone on YouTube, is are you alerted when you put two pawns on dark squares that your light squares are now uh, potentially uh, you know weaker in the position all of these light squares are potentially weaker in fact you could say the complex of squares not just one square in particular but the complex is potentially weaker are you aware of that possibility because I think it's actually useful to consider very useful to consider and the IM of course he played actually the second most popular move in the position which is the most popular move is d4 but actually bishop b5 check according to chess games comment, is very popular now bishop d7 in the light of the potential light squares you might think you don't want to give up the light square defender the light square bishop but actually it is a common move um, but the thing is Black's job generally, okay, is to be aware of I think potential light square weaknesses, but also try and pressurize white's dark square weaknesses. So there's the dark square complex, and particularly the central ones like e5 and d4. And actually, I did go wrong, not significantly wrong with bishop d7. Apparently, lots of people have played bishop d7 uh, because knight d7 has its own, you know, particular issues uh, it's it's sort of giving white what they want disrupted development for black and the knight really doesn't want to be there in fact you know as, as in Sicilian you want you want to try and attack the dark squares so actually this this is a move which after bishop takes d7 I think here is a mistake already um, where I I didn't take with the queen because black's job is to attack really the dark squares especially central squares so in terms of colour complex, uh, queen takes d7 actually I think makes more sense because really uh, you want the knight to be on c6 immediately targeting white's dark squares. Um, now in the game actually uh, I was significantly worse actually because also if you think about it and you hope you can see this analysis we can see white has a slight advantage. Queen d7, even the engine picks up somehow that queen d7 is just fractionally better, but it is because um, just just fractionally better. And if, if White really wants to play c4, look, they're weakening d4 even more. So they've got the Maroxy bind on d5, but d4 is even more weakened, meaning knight c6 really fits in uh, to the position attacking the dark squares. But the way I played it, uh, White's getting uh, you know that Maroxy. Uh, move c4 very shortly. Well, first d3, and now waiting even more for even more uh, dark square weaknesses. When actually here e6 again is a slight improvement, because if we consider that black is already weak on the light squares, so white's job is to try and weaken and exaggerate further black's light square weaknesses. Black's job is to try and weaken and exaggerate further white's dark square weaknesses so sometimes getting rid of this bishop is good strategically you know for this bishop uh, but if you look at this move this exaggerates um, e even more dark square weaknesses around the king so the complex is again um, weaker a little bit because um, <clears throat> well it means if the king's attacked later as it was um, it will be very difficult to play e5 anyway because the, the light squares are already weakened so that's something to bear in mind so I'm weakening even more squares even more responsibility uh, so, so maybe more solid than g6 would have been e6 
Uh, just because e6 also is doing something about d5. And if, if you play g6, then of course uh, playing e6 later is even more weaknesses on the dark square. So that that looked really unpleasant. So I think e6 to be more sensitive about the light squares. So you see these color complex issues behind the scenes. But actually, I thought this game quite, you know, quite exaggerated them and brought them out. So I've weakened even more um, squares with g6, making actually e6 more difficult to play later. Remember, the light square complex is slightly weaker. So c4, he's put a bind on d5, and it's difficult to break out of the bind now because I, to break out, I'd have to play e6 and d5, weaken even more squares that are already weakened. So bishop g7. But again, you know, White's advantage in theory, according to the engine, is not that much. But actually, it's interesting what's happened um, here in terms of um, the complexes. So here, Knight G5 was a tricky move because really, this is my chance, um, perhaps, uh, to either kick the knight. Actually, kicking the knight is not even coming up. So what I played. You know, maybe is okay, um, but here definitely um, it's it's becoming a problem. Not kicking the knight very shortly. So I play a six, and after queen f three, if I kick the knight now, then knight h three, and the queen, uh, the the pawn on h six is not going to be as vulnerable. Now I assume that black. Is, is, is doing all right on the dark squares here. And in fact, if you look at this position, um, you know, because of this f5, you know, the engine thinks black is doing okay. But perhaps knight e5, even though it gains a tempo, it's bad because really it's giving the knight f3. That, that's the real problem. Uh, so this is a variation which, which may have been more, more equal here to play b5, trying to strike out some counterplay. But there's pressure on the king side. And look at this light square, especially now. So this is starting to be dangerous. Um, now a move like g5 is, is it looks to be further weakening. And I don't know, you know, this, this looks to be quite e equal to the engine though, this position. Uh, maybe, you know, black has sufficient, you know, counterplay here. After rook b8, but the knight does look quite quite attractive at the moment, um, and it's more difficult to kick it because of this f6 idea. So if if we go back, <clears throat> knight e5 was was actually a one. Well, I think the first major blunder actually, because it's it means there's a lot of pressure going to be put now on my poor h6 pawn. And this further exaggerates actually my light square weaknesses because once I put these two pawns on dark squares, then the associated light square weaknesses are getting even worse. So after h6, another pawn on a dark square. So how many pawns now? One, two, that one in the start position. I couldn't do anything about that one. But it's going to be three and four now joining it. Four. So there's four pawns now on dark squares. And without a light square bishop, so in terms of the complex, uh, the complex is getting dangerously like critical. This is critical level that all of these light squares um, are being more strangled than black is strangling white uh, dark squares. Because uh, remember, this knight's just on e5. It's it's target to be munched. Okay, I've got the dark square bishop, but it's also having to defend the king as well. It's a bit overloaded. Uh, so we've got a battle of color complexes as well as king safety now going on. And in fact, after knight takes e5, because of king safety and protecting the h6 pawn, I'm forced to play d takes. So now he's got this potentially juicy d5, and it's only this pawn which can do something about it. But it's inhibited here, and you notice the bishop's also blocked in. Uh, it's inhibited because of potentially f6 from white. So because of king safety, d5 is actually quite badly weak. So he, he prompts another pawn uh, to be on a dark square here with bishop e3. So I'm becoming like a drafts board here with all the pawns on dark squares um, at move 16. Uh, and so white, okay, he's got pawns on light squares, but he hasn't got um, a light square bishop, you know, which is blocked in by. He's got a complementary bishop. My bishop's on the same color as all these squares. This this bishop's complementary. 
uh, to the pawn chain, to white's pawn chain. So there's potentially juicy light squares to exploit in my position here, in all of these places. Uh, so rook a d1, queen d7. It seems to be, you know, white's advantage is, is fairly solid here actually. So queen h5. And this is quite nice because it's, it's going to create this bind again, reinforce the bind of all the pawns on the light squares to lock in my bishop and lock all these pawns on the dark squares. So this is actually quite an amusing um, colour complex game. And now I'm forced to play a really ugly move, otherwise my king's going to be torn to shreds. So I play f6. And I thought he was. I thought this was a breather for me to play hg. In fact, it does go a bit down hg according to the engine because really, actually, this bishop is, is given a bit of life there. But then he's, he's blocking in after g4. He's pursuing his light square strategy ruthlessly. So it's from move two, basically, this bishop b5 check, that the light square uh, strategy of blockade is, is, is being shown up. And now this knight d5, and it's difficult. I, I, as I say, I think to play e6 here, this. Well, I think maybe knight takes b6 might be on. Or is it fe? Knight takes b6 is on. But takes. Whoops. Pardon me. Rook takes f1. And he's got a huge, huge knight here on d5. So th this would be an ideal, you know, huge knight. And, and the pieces are sort of looking in to the light square. So it's a bit like a, a weakened king's engine. You know, in the king's engine, often blacks, you know, very conscious of losing the light square bishop. And I'm a lot, a lot more conscious of that in king's engine. Um, so th this is a move now. Okay, if we go back to move 22. So it's very, very dramatic now what's happened in terms of color complexes. So I take here thinking this is a bit of relief. Um, engine suggests doing other things, not doing that. Because uh, really, actually, um, now e4, which I played, which I thought was risky, actually is is taking the opportunity to extend the scope of the bishop, and it's actually given as a, as a reasonable try actually by the engine here. He plays this move, not not just taking the pawn, which is interesting. But still, White's advantage is, is persistent. It's solid. It's a stored advantage. It's got a definite um, grip on my last squ light squares. And look at this formidable pawn chain, pointing dramatically actually. Uh, h6 is like a big huge arrow all pointing to this square. Look, e6, central light square being totally weak and undefendable. I've got no knight to defend e6. And he's got an, you know, an entry point to put pressure on e7. So this is actually a thoroughly miserable position and, you know, visually dramatic for light square strategy. It's a culmination of all the light square strategy and all the problems of every pawn move I've played so far in this game. Uh, so I try and at least get some b file counterplay anyway with b5. Uh, but then he's going to put pressure on that poor e7 pawn. And first he weakens also my, my, my dark squares around my king, potentially with this, with this bishop exchange. So I, I, I don't want to lose my bishop particularly. So I, I offer up the exchange. It was a miserable position anyway, um, but that really puts me apparently really on on the, on the downhill. So really, up, apparently the best is to play h5, but it's still a miserable position. So the exchange stack is a bit desperate, and he's just coming into that very very juicy light square. So it, it, it is a total triumph of of light square complex. Um, this this is fine for White to just give back the exchange. He retain, retains a big. He's got a material advantage. My checks are non-existent. So in fact, he has a force mate in five here with rook g6 check. So the rest of the game is, is a sort of mopping up job now in this rook and pawn ending. He's got enough pawns uh, to, to make it a nice, nice finish. Anyway, he was higher rated on the ICC auto pairing. And I'd won a few games before that, but I had some audio issues. So unfortunately, I had to remove them. But um, but no, I thought this was quite instructive actually, and, and your comments on YouTube started, you know, getting me thinking that I should have been maybe on on light square alert. I don't know about you guys, so I'm going to ask this question again. If you play the Sicilian, let's take away the engine, and you play now d6, are you already on light square alert, or do you play these moves not not thinking that your light squares are actually potentially weak, and also? Are you thinking that white's light squares are potentially weak? 
And do you prioritize uh, the central squares, these two in particular, because these are the two central dark squares. The two central dark squ uh, light squares for white to target are these two, and for black to target are these two. In this variation, you could argue. So bishop b5, second most popular move. Now some of you really think bishop d7 is a mistake, but it's counterbalanced by black's pressure on the central dark squares if you do get to play uh, queen takes d7. I think Sparth used this against the world, this bishop b5 line. But knight takes d7. All of a sudden, in the light of this discussion, I hope it becomes clearer that this this is the move which doesn't make sense. Que queen takes d7 makes more sense to put a knight on c6. Because what, you know, black is fighting on the dark square complex to try and weaken white's uh, dark squares and sometimes you know that's why in Sicilian games where you see f4 f5 black welcomes that to get a knight on e5 it's again this dark square complex fight going on and white's trying to sort of you know weaken the light squares but this was quite a vivid uh you know uh, blitz game demo of so this is like a subtle mistake based on not really getting the fight and remember i've made a transition recently um from playing the french to playing sicilian uh, just for a bit of variety now, in the French defence, actually, by contrast, often, um, you know, the light squares are not a major problem at all uh, for black, uh, especially in the advanced variation. It, you know, it's clear, much clearer, I don't know how, I've spelled it out many times, this, this kind of thing to weaken white's light squares. So really, you know, there's three, three pawn moves here committed for white to put pawns on dark squares. And so black's really heavily fighting for light square strategy here to weaken white's light squares with things like you know bishop b5 so if you transition from the french defense to the sicilian all of a sudden it's it's a reversal of, of color strategy that in the sicilian you know you're you're weak on on the light squares and actually one of the reasons i gave up um the sicilian sveshnikov is you know i did win some games with the dynamics sometimes of of the sicilian uh, sveshnikov um that you you know you often get um, you know the bishop pair if 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 white um, you know plays this line you get the bishop pair you get the g file so you get some dynamics but you are weak on the light squares and this is why you know this this sort of stuff makes sense because you know white's light square strategy is evident but already you know you can say you can say after two moves in after one move in the Sicilian that. The, the the square strategy, the color complex strategy, is already pronounced for both sides, as it is almost with the French defense, that the color strategy is almost pronounced. And as soon as you you know get two pawns uh, like this, uh, then you know, for example, this continuation, you realize, yeah, you know, white, you want to weaken white on the light squares, and sometimes there's even variations with an early you know b6 and bishop a6 but the the most obvious um opening in terms of color complex though has to be you know i think like the the, the stone wall the the dutch stone wall um you know this this kind of thing where black is putting um you know a lot of pawns on light squares you know oft, often you know it's it's much clearer that white strategy is is to fight on on the dark squares to exchange off this guy. So often later you you know you see plans like bishop e2, queen c c1 for bishop a3 to get rid of this guy. You know once this one is here. So so basically um I, so I just I just wanted to share that with you that some thoughts that actually from switching from the French to the Sicilian recently I haven't been actually that sensitive um to, to the light square issues in fact in another blitz game uh recently i was quite keen um to play uh something like bishop g4 later taking on f3 but really that really is often helping white um unless there's a definite weakening of d4 you've got to be careful you know of weakening light squares but really this this balance of, of color complex strategies has to factor in you know the key central squares um you know that both sides are also trying to take of that particular uh you know color complex so d5 for white is is pivotal in in many variations particularly the Sveshnikov, 
uh, where you're playing e5 later, so you're you know further weakening d5. But d4 is is absolutely critical for black, you know, because it ticks the boxes of being uh, you know a dark square on, on the dark square complex, but a central dark square. So these two, you know, are the key ones often for black, and these two are often the key ones for white. Um, I hope some of you um, may have not already thought about this much and I may find this interesting um, but I thought this game was actually a vivid concrete you know demo so I don't know what you guys think if you're convinced with that argument then I think you might be convinced Queen takes d7 is, is a much better move to fight for the central dark squares here more easily with Knight c6 um, so the bind seems logical because white's got rid of the light square bishop so there's no bishop either to block in and and from that point of view actually also, further weakening dark squares increases the responsibility for taking care of d5 because if because if e6 is is more difficult to play because of f6 issues, then maybe it makes more sense for e6 and bishop e7 as well. Um, so it's very very interesting. I think color complex game. Uh, what what happens here? Um, and this this knight g5, I made things a lot worse by by creating even more weaknesses on the king side, which provoked this kind of drafts type position where I've got loads of pawns now trying to evict this knight get another pawn on a dark square and then another to protect h6 because quick you know king h7 suffers you know sometimes from knight g5 checks or just g4 and bishop h6 and g5 so I don't really want the king you know on the h file so I'm putting lots and lots of pawns now on the dark squares and the other thing that really happened which was bad news well, th this one was bad news, and and this locking. Um, okay, so maybe you know it's best here um, to try and make the best of it and and not take on d5 to expose e6 because actually I ended up exposing uh, a key central light square. If you think about the color complex here, the two key central light squares are, are these two, which White's trying to get at. So I've actually I've given access along the e file. But by, by what happened here, uh, so this pawn sack maybe you know wasn't the best. But let's just examine if I didn't play e4. So that does seem heavily controversial. In fact, by not taking there, he gave himself frontal access to e6, which was actually maybe a stroke of genius because then the bishop's going to move and he's going to put pressure on the e file and e6. Whilst if he had taken here, I could have set up potentially a dark square blockade, say a queen on e5. And e6 wouldn't have been a problem because the e4 pawn would have been um, ma making e6 less accessible. So what actually happened after e4 was was quite interesting. But was e4 actually um, forced then? If White's just going to allow e takes d3, you know the engine's giving e4 for some reason as well. Um, but let, let's just try another move. Let's just try queen d6. What would have happened? Say rook fe1. Let's just play another move. Bishop f2. So white could potentially. I think the key problem here is that white is going to target e5 anyway. So that's why I think the engine might might actually like my e4 move um, because it also sensed the possibility, perhaps, of a blockade with a white pawn on e4. But if white plays accurately as he did, then he's still got that central access to a key light square on the e file. Uh, so what he did after this pawn set was absolutely a fantastic reaction. You know, we're talking light square strategy, light square strategy and a central square. So ticking the box, this key central square, key e file. Once he gets access to that now, it's game over strategically. It really is game over strategically. And it, it's further compounded with obviously winning the exchange is, is a bonus now. So it's just the exchange up with, with a dominating position. And this is just a token material transaction, really. Um, and he's got he's got quicker access to my king. In fact, it was a mate in five. So I hope uh, you know that was actually a really instructive game from my point of view. And I hope maybe some of the ideas I've, I've reflected are quite interesting to you guys uh, about color complexes, uh, central squares, um, how different openings dictate. Uh, you know the color complex straight away almost even after two pawn moves a color complex is, is almost dictated straight away if you play the French or if you play the Sicilian the com color complex is very well defined okay comments or questions on YouTube
and take care of, if you're playing the Sicilian, try and take care of your light squares. Thanks very much.